I'm going to use this image to introduce you to the new Smart Sharpen function inside Photoshop CS2. So make sure that the USM layer, the top layer inside the image, is active. And then I want you to press Control-Alt-F or Command-Option-F on the Mac. And I want you to enter the following values, 200% with a radius of 20 pixels and a threshold value of zero. All right, so sort of a familiar variety of unsharp masks that we're applying to this image. And incidentally, notice if you use a very high radius value, such as 20 pixels, combined with a low amount value, you just end up getting an exaggerated contrast effect. So this is before if I turn off preview, and this is after. And you'll see in this area here, we just got a little bit of contrast enhancement. In case you want to use the unsharp mask command for different purposes, it's a great way to just elevate the contrast in the image without actually making it appear more sharp. And once again, that's a low amount value combined with a high radius value and, of course, a threshold of zero. I'm going to go ahead and combine a high amount value with a high radius value, which is only good for demos, really. It's not good for doing anything good to an image. But it is good for demonstrating the differences and similarities between commands, which is what we're about to do here. So 200%, 20 is for radius, 0 for threshold. Click OK to accept that change. Now I want you to drop down to the next layer in the stack, which is called Gauss Blur. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to this portion of the image. And then I'm going to go up to the Filter menu. I'm going to choose Sharpen. And notice right here, Smart Sharpen. Now what's interesting about this is this little pop-up menu, this little sub-menu of commands here, has been the same since Photoshop 1.0. So for the last 14 years, it's been dormant. It's had exactly the same command, sharpen, sharpen edges, sharpen more, and unsharp ask. 14 years later, we finally get something different here, smart sharpen, and it is a welcome addition, let me tell you, to Photoshop's sharpening arsenal because it is really a splendid command. Now, notice if you bring up this command, it's probably going to have different default values set up here. But you're going to see a preview of how your image looks, a big preview inside this dialog box. And in the background, you're also going to be able to preview the effect inside the image window, just the way you can inside the Unsharp Mask dialog box. Let me move this into frame just a little bit better here so we can see everything. We also have an amount value, which I have set to 200%. I want you to do that too. And a radius value, which I have set to 20 pixels. I want you to do that too. So they're set to the exact same values they were inside the Unsharp Mask dialog box. And notice there is no threshold value, which is another smart thing about Smart Sharpen, is that it doesn't even give you a threshold value. It allows you to adjust threshold in a different way, as we'll see. It's kind of a threshold adjustment. We'll come to that in a moment. What's the big difference, though, between this command and Unsharp Mask is what it allows you to remove. So by default, it's set to remove Gaussian Blur. If it's not set that way for you, go ahead and choose Gaussian Blur. Notice you also have Lens Blur and Motion Blur. We'll come to those in just a moment. Go ahead and choose Gaussian Blur and turn More Accurate off. More Accurate does not mean more accuracy, folks. It means that it's going to do a more deadly job of sharpening the blemishes, the noise inside of an image. And generally speaking, you want this option off. I'll go ahead and show you the weirdness that occurs when you turn the option on. You get a lot more noise enhancement inside the image. So it is, I guess, technically a more accurate sharpening algorithm because it's tracing around every single little bit of noise and edge inside the image. But for most images, you're going to want that guy turned off. All right, so I have 200%, 20 radius, exact same values I had before with remove set to Gaussian blur. I'm going to click OK in order to accept my modification. And it looks, for all intents and purposes, exactly like the Unsharp Mask variety right here. So when you set Smart Sharp in a Gaussian Blur, it produces more or less the same effects as you get when you apply the Unsharp Mask command. And that's because when you're trying to remove Gaussian Blur, you're basically applying a digital blur to an image, which is the same thing that the Unsharp Mask command does. We'll talk more about exactly what's going on with the Gaussian Blur in the next lesson. But for now, just note that it's basically an averaging of colors inside the image. And it has a little bit of Gaussian curve associated with it to give some tapering to the blur value so that you get some nice, really, really soft edges inside the image. The problem is that the kind of blurring you get from a camera and from a scanner isn't really Gaussian blurring. It's a different kind of blurring. It's typically either a lens blurring, which means you didn't get the focus dead on, or it's a motion blurring, which means that the shutter was open a little bit too long and you moved the camera as you were shooting the photograph. 
And that's a great thing about smart sharpening is it allows you to get rid of those two varieties of blurring, which are more common varieties of blurring that you'll experience inside of a photographic image. 